Hi everyone. So today I want to show you a little trick that I figured out. Um, Sailor has recently released a product in Japan only that is basically a Sailor fountain pen nib but attached to a dip pen handle. So it's just the nib. The reason that I thought this was interesting is because regular dip pen nibs can tend to have a pretty sharp point and they get damaged pretty quickly um, with all the flexing and stuff that you're doing. So I will sometimes um, grind the nibs on dip pen nibs just because I prefer a smoother writing experience. They can be kind of scratchy. But um, this product that Sailor released kind of got me thinking a little bit about the tools I have in my own toolbox, so to speak. So I'm honestly kind of surprised this was the first pen that I tried this with and it worked great. So I'm just, I'm just not even messing. This is a Pilot Kakuno fountain pen. Um, I don't ever use these because I find that they dry out too quickly. The Kakuno caps, they just don't seal very well, basically. Like, I don't, I'm not sure why, but they, they dry out faster than I prefer. Um, but one thing that new fountain pen users might not realize is in almost all fountain pens, even the expensive ones, not all of them, almost all of them, the nibs are friction fit into the body of the pen. That basically means they're just stuck in there. So in this case, with the Kakuno, it literally just pops right out. Pop it in, use the pen, pop it out, no problem. Some pens are easier to remove these than others, but that's the idea. So I took the nib out of my Kakuno pen. Now these are meant to come apart. I didn't break anything. This is still usable. I remove the nib, nib from the body in the feed, and this is what it looks like. And this is a Kakuno F nib, which is a Pilot Fine nib. And I stuck it. This is not even a branded nib holder. It's probably by Tachikawa, I think is the brand. Um, but it's not, it doesn't have a brand on it. But you can buy these super cheap, Amazon, wherever. Blick, Jerry's. So I took my fountain pen nib and I stuck it into my holder and lo and behold, it fits perfectly. I didn't even have to bend or break anything like this is still usable as a fountain pen nib in my fountain pen, but it's also now usable as a dip pen nib. And where that comes in handy is one for testing your new inks when you buy them, but also for using inks that have glitter or high sheen or just something that you want to use once you don't want to put it in a pen. Um, so I'm actually going to use this J. Urban Emerald de Chavour. This is just a little, probably a sculpting tool that we have in the house. I'm actually going to leave this in here because with the sparkle inks, as you use them, you kind of have to give them, you have to agitate them and I don't want to keep putting on the lid and taking it off again. The other thing I wanted to show you is this writing pad. This is lined Tomoe River paper and it's in a pad. So it's just a, a writing pad for letters. And I wanted to show you this because I made it and it was actually really, well, for me, it was easy. I have the right tools. So you can see the edges are nice and sharp. You wouldn't know this wasn't a mass produced pad. So uh, if you're interested, basically to make a pad, you need one of these cardboard sheets you can buy them on Amazon and you need to cut your paper down to size clip it on clip all the pieces together on one edge and then you use something called pad glue to glue one edge of your papers together do a couple of layers and then if you want one of these covers it's literally just a piece of craft paper glued on the back and bent over the top that's literally all it is and it took me maybe 30 minutes to make, including all of the cutting and trimming. So anyway, I'm going to use my dip pen and I'll show you a little 
demo of how this works. So this is a Pilot F nib. So again, this is an F nib. The Kakuno specifically comes in extra fine, fine, medium, and maybe broad. I'm not sure about the broad. But I was testing this earlier and I got approximately three to four lines in this paper written off of one dip in the inkwell. And now I need to dip. So I'm going to stir to agitate those glitter particles and get my dip. So anyway, I will continue my letter, but I just wanted to show you this idea because I think I'm actually going to leave this nib in this nib holder and use it for testing my new inks as they come in because I have my ink book and I like to do a little writing sample for each ink that I bring in and in order to get an accurate dip sample I would prefer to use a nib that I would normally use for writing so I'll actually find there's Emerald de Chavour, so I will add a sample. And you can see the gold glitter in that, hopefully. So anyway, I hope that this has been a fun experiment for you. I have really enjoyed um, exploring this idea. I think it's just a really nice way to be able to use a, a comfortable round pointed, a round tip nib with my favorite inks and not have to um, fill up a pen and otherwise kind of deal with swatching at switching out inks back and forth and oh I like this one uh, maybe I don't like this one and because this is my most commonly used nib now you could use a, a medium or an extra fine or whatever you prefer but because this is my favorite nib size it just makes sense to have a dip pen available in that size so yeah I'm just gonna keep writing my letter to Irene and uh, I hope you have a great day and enjoyed this video let me know if you use your fountain pen nibs as dip pen nibs, or am I the only one? I would love to hear. Have a good day. Bye.